agreed, uh, deputy or, or rear. How many minutes do I have? Uh, you have uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Uh, Grimaldi de Carhier again. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to speak uh, on this matter because I believe it to be of, of particular importance. I passionately believe that we as legislators have an obligation to protect that precious place that is childhood. In the past, we failed collectively as a society to treasure childhood and children. But now is our chance to rectify that and stand united in an effort to safeguard these most vulnerable members of our society. I would like to begin my speech by acknowledging the work of the late Mary Raftery, who in 1999 brought to our TV screens the horror of what so many of our children went through in industrial schools. Her program, States of Fear, led to widespread horror at the depth of abuse, both physical and emotional, that some of our citizens were put through. And last year, I had the honor to present Christine Buckley, an ab abuse survivor, uh, with the Labour Party's Evelyn Owens Award. Her follow-up program, Mary Raftery's follow-up program in 2002, Cardinal Secrets, then documented how those in leadership roles failed to investigate or deal with complaints of abuse. However, what is equally as distressing is how it also detailed the then political establishment's failure to protect those in state care. Let us never be found guilty of such failings again. And let us work together in protecting children. Many issues will divide us in this house, but surely this is not one of them. May I include in that reference the children currently housed in direct provision centres across the country as their parents await asylum applications. They too need protection, and I hope that the Minister will ensure that ad adequate safe safeguards are in place to ensure that in 15 years' time we do not see similar horror scenes on our televisions about abuse. The move by the Minister for Children and Youth Affairs to put into place legal requirements on mandatory reporting to the upcoming Children's First legislation is most welcome, as is the imminent creation of a National Children and Family Support Agency. But alone these moves are not enough. We need a cultural shift where children are put at the heart of our social agenda, and this referendum is the beginning in creating that dialogue as it sets down a legal minimum standard. The Constitution needs to be amended, so there is a general recognition and affirmation of the rights of the child. We need to ensure that there is provision for the state to intervene in those very rare cases when a child's parents have failed to protect them. We need the Constitution to treat all children equally, regardless as whether or not their parents are married. We need to be certain that when proceedings affect children, that their best interests are paramount in the production of a resolution. Finally, we need to ensure that the views of children are sought and considered in any proceedings affecting them. Last week, I wrote a column for thejournal.ie about the long road this referendum has taken. Since 2007, there have been three different wordings proposed for a possible constitutional amendment on this issue. The wording before us tonight is the fourth such proposal. We have spent the last decade trying to make this amendment perfect. In using the term we, I refer, I refer to all of my colleagues in all political parties, and indeed not in any party, who have served the people over the last 10 years. In 2007, the then Minister for Children proposed that Article 42.5 of the Constitution would be deleted and re replaced with a new article that affirmed the natural and imprescribable rights of all children. Later that year, the Joint Committee on the Constitution Amendment on Children was established to agree an all-party consensus. This committee met 62 times over a period of 27 months, producing three reports. The final of these reports in 2010 proposed another wording to strengthen children's constitutional rights. More recently, in 2011, a third wording was agreed, but never formally published by the new minister who had been appointed in 2008. However, with the arrival of the Troika and a change in government in 2011, this issue was sub subsequently sidetracked, and the task to put this to bed fell onto the new government and the new minister. It is clear, therefore, that before we set out to take on this challenge, there had already been a significant amount of work put into this issue, and that needs to be acknowledged. Given the care that was shown by previous office holders and the work that has been done by this government and the last, we prioritise this measure as a standalone referendum to ensure that the debate can be clear and focused. It was also decided to hold it on a Saturday to give maximum opportunity to all citizens to have their voice heard. And it is particularly crucial that those who are perhaps voting for the first time have the chance to help bury the painful legacy of the past and to make history for our children. I am honoured to serve on the Labour Party's campaign committee on this issue, alongside my colleagues, Deputies White and Conway and Minister Lynch, and I look forward to working with those from all sides of the House 
in getting this referendum passed. I hope that we will continue to debate the debate on children's rights and child protection indefinitely so that we ensure that we protect childhood for everyone. My long-term hope is for us as legislators to create a culture of listening where children's views are taken into account in all aspects of their lives. This amendment empowers us as Oireachtas members to draft and pass legislation which will copper fasten the rights of a child and mop up the final anomalies present in our law. I look forward to working with everyone here and in the NGO sector in continuing the advancement of children's rights long into the future. Childhood is precious, Aka Herlik. I am proud to be a part of the political system that has finally woken up to that fact. Gormagot. Gormagot, Hakta, and uh, next is uh, Anchakta James Bannon, who has 10 minutes.